loves, welcome back to another video. I hope you're doing really well. Today, I thought I could bring you along and spend the next few days with me for this week's marathon prep. We have the Milan Marathon this Sunday. It's currently Wednesday when I'm starting filming this and just thought I could share how I'm currently preparing. I have been and trained this morning. I've done a six and a half kilometer run, which was my pre-marathon run. Like that was my final run before the marathon, which was a bit to about two kilometers at marathon pace, two kilometers at a comfortable pace part at a comfortable pace part at marathon pace and I'm feeling really good if you didn't already know I had a bit of what I thought could have been a calf injury last week but I think it was literally just tightness but I've never experienced it before so I didn't really know I was really panicking because it was a really weird pain and I couldn't run for like a week so I just sat myself on an exercise bike and oh, I was just not in a good place like mentally it was just messing with my head because I've trained for like 10 weeks now and poured my heart and soul into this marathon training. I've been training like two hours, four days a week, so doing my weight session and then my running session and I've just not left a stone unturned. So I was just so frustrated last week thinking, what if I have to pull out of this marathon and this, that and the other, but we're all good. I'm feeling good to go. And I actually wore calf sleeves for the first time today. I don't know whether it was placebo, but they're actually supposed to help with like blood flow to your calf and my legs felt quite nice and warm. Like I think they'd be good if you're running in colder temperatures and they were nice like you need to make sure you've got like a good one as in that it's actually compression rather than just like a sock if you know what I mean so I'm considering maybe running the marathon in them but today I'm just running around like an absolute headless chicken I've got so much to do I have just been collected a corrupted SD card from my camera I've just actually gone into this guy's shop with a pair of knickers hanging out my pocket. Someone came around to my house earlier and I just, why do you find like random pairs of underwear just flicking around your house? I was like, oh, shove that in my pocket. And of course it was half hung out as I've gone into this shop. I also need to just, They actually look like stubs, like they don't even look like things at this point. Need to go and sort these out. Like such a love-hate relationship with getting my nails done. I love nails, but this situation is just happening a bit too often. Like I feel like I've been a bit stressed this week, so maybe I've been biting them more and they just ping off. So I need to sort that out. I also need to get some running gels and I'm gonna have to try and get the exact same running gels that I have been using the past few weeks, even though I really don't like the taste of them, but I'm just not prepared to test out a new running gel on a marathon day. Like, can you imagine? If I follow through or something, I shouldn't have said that out loud. Why never have I said that out loud? Why have I just put that into the universe and said that on camera? I really wish I haven't because now it's going to fly through my head. But I want to try and get the same running gel so that my stomach just doesn't decide to do any flips on me. That'd be ideal. So yeah, I thought I could bring you along with me. Some real talk about this marathon as well that I haven't really seen spoken about is how it really is time consuming. Like I feel like towards the end of this prep I've had such like little energy for creative things or like I found it hard to manage business stuff and then being like training like a lot more if that makes sense like having energy after that I totally understand how like a lot of athletes they're like professional athletes that that is their full-time job but they don't really do much else like when Mason was playing professional rugby he comes home and like he can sleep or have a nap for a few hours and I'd always be like oh god like I don't understand and now I totally do because in rugby training they'll do all this weight training and then like a two-hour our field sessions so like running around and now I totally get it like I used to be like oh god it's a bit lazy to sleep in the day and I could easily have a nap after some of my sessions at the minute also this morning's session I did on the treadmill and I've been really enjoying on the treadmill especially since I had the car thing because it's a little bit less impact like I don't think it compares to outdoor running but if you are training for a half marathon or even wanting to just run a bit more I find you can kind of switch off sometimes like you can just put a podcast on which is quite handy by the way I've seen some scenes like sat in this car just talking to you there's a woman who's balancing about seven trays of eggs in front of me and i don't know where to look right now another thing to mention is i did a hot fire hot fire tricep session this morning and i actually did one of my upper body workouts that's in my week of workouts video if you've not already seen that go and check that out it's up on my channel i really feel like i've been chasing my tail a bit this week like i you know you just feel like you physically can't get enough done in a day that sort of vibe and i think it's from being a bit thrown off with the clocks going forward like i'm loving how much lighter it is and i think it'll i'll be fine in a few days but i've noticed that i i've just struggled to get into bed early enough so i'm finding myself waking up later or like i've been also trying to prioritize making sure i get seven hours sleep this week especially for the marathon and making sure that my calf 
heels but with that has meant I've been eating my dinner at nine o'clock at night for the past three nights in a row which I really don't like doing and then like last night I think it would have been like half eleven and I was just wide awake but that's the other thing about life like I really think it's impossible to be perfect all the time like I feel like I've not seen my friends as much this past few weeks like with doing so much running which again is totally fine like I think got to sacrifice in certain phases of your life and when you're trying to achieve something the same goes during certain phases of your life you will have patches and phases where you're busier or like you're trying to achieve a goal and you want to just stay focused like phases and seasons of your life where you might have more time than others like summer times I generally seem to travel quite a bit more and have more free time shall we say These are what I've been running with. They've got the caffeine in. I get three of these. Maybe an orange one. This has not got any caffeine in it. Just finished the work I was doing. Now to pack my case. What I'm going to do is get all my things out and then grab my case down. 20 to 10. Did plan on packing a lot earlier, but I had some like technical problems with uploading one of my YouTube videos. So I just sat in front of my laptop to make sure I could get that done. And it's always such a big relief when I actually just managed to get that over with. Look at my hair. What is this? You know stuff is getting done when your hair is in a bun, and I don't even remember putting my hair in a bun. But the suitcase I think is packed. Slight issue, I'd ordered a marathon outfit and it's not arrived, but it's fine. And we get to Milan on the Thursday, the marathon's on the Sunday, so I'm thinking I can just get something whilst I'm there or run in something that's trusty and I'm not gonna chafe. I'll show you what we're looking like and then I wanna show you what I'm bringing with me. I also do think I need to look at the time because I need to leave here, leave my house to drive to Manchester. I think 4 a.m.? No. So I need to get to Manchester for eight, it takes two hours. God, I must be tired because my <laughs> brain's not even. So that would mean you might want to hear my brain at this point. So I need to leave at six. I think I can get up about five. Sorted. Okay, so this side is actually normal clothes. That side is gym wear. And then here is my camera electricals, just miscellaneous. I don't know if I've booked this on or not, to be honest, but I do need to do that. I always think this just saves so much stress because I can't carry all my cameras in my handbag. Like it just doesn't, does not work. And then I've got all my beauty bits. I've got my tan, uh, hair gel. I don't know if I need to take the wax stick as well, but no, I'm pulling out all the stops since I am running a flipping marathon. And then my favorite moisturizer, so I'll give you one. My shampoo and all my makeup had a delivery today from Asics and I don't know whether I'll actually run in these but oh they kind of look different in person they're like a light pinky red so basically these are the Asics Nova Blast so they're like the same shoe that you've heard me banging on about by now just in a different colorway because I thought it'd be nice to run a fresh shoe but at the same time I just think with my calf being a bit dodge I know my foot will have shaped that current shoe that I've been running in so I don't think it's a wise idea the question is do I take these with me they are really nice though like I would love to run in these on marathon day but it's not worth it not worth it for the aesthetic but I think I'll probably keep them because the Asics Nova Blast has been my favourite trusty like long distance running trainer and they're just like clouds like running on a cloud something else very excited about is the shocks so I can't wait to surprise Mason with these tomorrow I got us both the uh, beige I was gonna say cream flavour. The beige open fit ones. These had really good reviews and I thought I'd give these a try because these are like a popular running headphone that don't noise cancel out totally so you can still hear outside. And I actually haven't minded running in my AirPods, but I've just noticed on that long run that I did recently, like they were just, like I was concerned to push them back in my ear and then it paused my music and I was getting really frustrated by the end of it. So I just thought may as well get some proper headphones for running that aren't gonna fall out. 
and I just preferred these ones because they're still like wireless and they don't have that bit around the back which I thought just meant like they might be a bit more convenient so I can't wait to give these go. I'll let you know how they are and what I think and everything. Some other stuff I picked up today. I had a quite successful trip out like I feel like I got all this stuff very quick. So these are the gels that I've been using. I really don't actually love the flavour like I haven't found I think is it the mixed berry one that's quite nice but I've got this berry one this has got 75 milligrams of caffeine and I really feel that caffeine compared to the ones caffeine free which Mason actually prefers. So I'm going to take some of these for actual marathon day and then I also got some med jewel dates. This is like my snack of choice if I'm going on a run. I picked up some toothpaste. I don't know why I picked up this random raspberry flavour. The only thing with these is they can send your stomach a real funny way like they don't really agree with Mason which I think that's why he doesn't like them but yeah and then I also got an SD card. I also picked up this thing from the bakery earlier. I think it's like a French toast but she said it was the most popular thing. It looks like custard. Oh, it looks so nice actually. I got it for Mason but I'll give it to her in the morning. What I do need to do is pack my vitamins. Magnesium oil to my tag car. Anyone home? Hello. Wow, you're Lee. Are you? Hello. How are you doing this drive? Oh, it's oh my gosh, you're so clean. Hello. Oh, it feels good. <laughs> you went to the groomers last week and I don't know what they've done to her paws but I can't stop laughing. It's the back ones like, they've trimmed your tootsie so short. Oh I can't. She looks like a cat or something or like she's on stilts. So Pete is living between Manchester and my house at the minute. God. Normally these are like the flutiest things but she definitely knows that I'm talking about. the airport lounge and checked in everything or our suitcases. I think we've got 20 minutes or something, but I brought Mason some presents. You got me a present. Oh, is it fish? Wow. Nice. It's actually the best one from that, from our favourite bakery. Mm. It's really mm. popular, is it nice? And then Another one, bloody. Uh, What's this one? Um, AirPods. AirPods. Shots. Lovely. Wanna run the marathon in these maybe? Matching. So I've got a new watch for my marathon. New headphones for my marathon. And a lovely slice of bread. So these work right without actually going in. Wait, how does it go? I think it I don't know if it does go in here, but it's bone technology or something. Does it move? They look quite cool, don't they? They're sleek. So we're in Milano. Just checked into our Airbnb. It's so, oh, it's so nice. Really cute, isn't it? We only booked it actually yesterday and we were torn between this one and there was another one that was, like it was a two bed, but it just looked a little bit dinged, didn't it? Mm. So we've gone with this smaller one and so glad we did. It's in a really nice location, that really nice street and it feels literally brand new. I'll give you a little tour. So this is outside. We just came in the entrance like down here. How cute is this? It's really calming, isn't it? I think with the windows and the high ceiling. So you come in here and this is the kitchen. An espresso machine. Mason's put his shocks on charge. 
I even like the case that these come in. I can't wait to try them. I've not unboxed mine just yet, but I'll do that in a bit. Little breakfast bar where we can sit and have breakfast. And I'm already imagining like after the run, just collapsing onto this sofa TV. And I made sure it had a washing machine so that we can wash any like sweaty clothes, which I think is such a hack if you're ever traveling or staying in an Airbnb, make sure one has a washing machine so you don't have to go home with loads of dirty washing. Comfy? Big as well. Yeah, it looks bigger than a double, doesn't it actually? We're worried it's a bit small mm -hmm. from the pictures, but it seems a bit bigger. Down, yeah. And then, oh, not being here yet. This is a good idea, isn't it? Having a um, side mirror. Someone's put a lot of thought into this. Yeah, like the attention to detail. This bathroom's gorgeous, isn't it? I like the wood mixture with the stone. Could film some cool content in here as well. Oh, it's really nice. We're just going to decide what we're going to do the rest of the day. We brought loads of snacks actually, which is always a good idea like on before the actual plane because sometimes we get really hangry and then snappy with each other when we're travelling. So that was a good shout out today because I'm not ravenous right now. And I can actually have a conversation. We also saw some other marathon runners on the plane. I got chatting to them. There was a guy who's ran three marathons. So yeah, I'm feeling a bit nervous to be honest now. Like as soon as we landed, I just thought, oh my God, 42 kilometres. I don't know whether I wish that I'd have ran the distance just so that I had that extra confidence. Like my longest run today has been 32 kilometers. I'm not sure what that is in miles actually. I feel like I've started working kilometers ever since I started running, but before it used to be miles. But I know I'll be absolutely fine. I just need to keep affirming positive thoughts. Even the detail with like the plants is really nice. I love the style of the buildings. It reminds me a bit of Lisbon. Good morning, it's Friday and we got up, had some breakfast, we've just been kind of lounging about and planning our day out. We've decided we're just going to kind of chill a bit these next few days and see some of Milan, which would be nice. We're just about to head for a little bit of a run, we're thinking just like a steady 3 or 5k. thought it made sense to actually run with the accessories that we've got, as in like this running belt, just to make sure that I can fit gels in and that it's like comfortable. Because can you imagine on the actual day, like if I've not ran in certain stuff? like these calf sleeves and other stuff I'd just be so annoying if I had to like throw them to the side or something so this is this running belt it's adjustable and I wanted to check that it fits my phone in I just got this belt off Amazon so far it looks pretty good like it just straps around so you can just change the size and then I'm thinking I'm just going to have my phone at the back like that but yeah we're going to go in this run and then also collect our bits we just downloaded up the pdf and stuff to scan so I've been running with these cis ones. Oh, they honestly don't taste too good. I think I'm gonna go to the night shop as well today. I don't mind seeing if I can get some shorts. I ordered some of the Aero Swift shorts, but they didn't arrive in time. That's what I was hoping to actually run in, but it's fine. Mm. I think I can only fit four gels in here. And then I unbox the shocks. I haven't actually tried them. I want to push them in my ear so they don't actually go in your ear. Yeah, they're not going to move, are they either, actually? Yeah, they feel quite nice, actually. So I'm going to a nice case. It's chargeable. The open fit ones, these are supposed to be a bit louder than the other one, I can't remember the name of it, that goes like, that's got the, the thing that goes like on the back of your neck, like I think they're a bit quieter, but so that's quite good, pretty good sound. Just thought of something with these headphones, where are these going to sit? No, I think we'll just slot in. Yeah, yeah slot. Right. I feel like they're going to fly, like I think because they're not in your ear, they almost feel like they're going to fly off, but... It's just getting used to them. Nice. Should we see your outfit for the day? Your run outfit for the day? So I'm decided. Just some skins. Yeah, they look really nice to me. I wouldn't mind some of them. I'm not sure about this top just yet. Some glasses and the shorts. Showered and I'm just heading out to the supermarket to get some bits and thinking to get something for lunch because we're going to cook from our Airbnb until probably after the marathon. Like I just can't be asked with risking having a dodgy stomach. I've just realised I haven't taken a key. Mason's doing a bit of work and I thought oh, I'll just get myself out. I want to go and explore as well. It was nice to actually have a little run round earlier and we're in a good location so we're like slap bang in the centre of Milan. It's really nice. It's quite bougie the street actually but it's actually on the Airbnb. I've washed my hair and I feel brand new. I felt so dusty. I, like as soon as I've got here I felt dusty. Right let's go locate the car for. This is the street that the Airbnb's in. We did something quite funny earlier so it was like you can see that door 
that word and word. Basically where our, our Airbnb is, is like the identical door. So it was open like this second one when we came back from our run. Of course me and Mason like walked in, we were like, oh, saves getting the keys out. Went through the door to our apartment and we were in the wrong block altogether. And then I'd walked up four flights of stairs because I was like, oh, there's no point taking the lift to get up. Mason arrived at the apartment and we we're in the wrong whole building altogether. So love that from us. favourite things is supermarkets abroad like I get so excited going down all the aisles I've noticed one random thing that like all the protein bars here are totally different brands to the ones in like the UK and even Dubai actually like I haven't seen any of these I'm actually just gonna get stuff that we've been having like chicken sweet potato basically tried to just replicate what I have at home. I found this little mini bottle of ketchup. Chicken, onions, some avocado, some pita breads, three bags, three or four bags of salad, avocado oil and some potatoes, tomatoes, cucumber and then seasonings. I just got paprika, I don't know whether this is smoked, curry powder, I think I had to um, Google translate this, I think that's garlic and then some sort of balsamic, it says cream? Couldn't work out what that was, but I thought I don't fancy dry salad and just some oregano. collect our race bibs it's about 35 minutes to get there so we're just having a look well mason's having a look how is best if it's close maybe we could take um we took the line bikes that were electric and the whizziest things like i kid you not i nearly flew off the back of it not only like one or two times any time i went to pedal it went zhoop! and shot me up the road. I feel like mine was faster than Mason's though. But we just had a meeting, like a quick one, and it was about the project that's en route. Very, very exciting. You look handsome. Thank you. Handsome, man. She's Milan, you know, I got to. Milano. Try our best. It's quite funny, right. that Airbnb maybe, wasn't it? Oh, we had, we made all this food, and then she just arrived, it had just finished cooking, and we were both ravenous. It was a bit awkward, wasn't it? Mm. This is our door, by the way, that's, it's like a hidden. Then go through to the main door. Just sort of show you. we found out from the land all the way is that this used to be one big apartment. I used to go everywhere down and then split it into two one beds. This is like the traditional type of Milan. Very Italian style. This is our lift. Can I call you Rose? Can I call? Pedaling on these little bikes through heaps of people. We're going to stop at the night store on the way back. Good. The left better than the right, but 
Ah, this is injured as well. This is perfect. So it's Saturday and my nerves have well and truly kicked in, like just from nowhere I feel like. Yesterday we picked up our race bib which you have come with me to do with all those people and I was just having a gander seeing what kind of people have also committed to run a marathon on a random Sunday morning and I was a bit in my feels and I've not even thought about the race yet. Just thinking how crazy it is that I was literally someone who always said, oh my god I'm not a runner, I hate running, I don't do cardio. I just, how can you have such a full circle moment is just crazy to think about and also your sign and not to put yourself in a box because I feel like we can just put ourselves so stuck in one position and you always think oh I could just never be that person like when it comes to thinking oh I'm just not a morning person I'm just could never be a morning person that's just not me things like that and oh, I could never be slim or I could never be muscly I could never be confident or I could never go up to speak to anyone like these are the things that we can often project and they're just limiting beliefs and they're not actually true they're just literally thoughts in your mind and sometimes you can identify with them and I think it's just so important to make sure you're not limiting yourself because your potential is limitless like well and truly limitless and if I can run a flipping marathon you can too and if I can change you can too like when I was 19 I remember being in this in my second year of uni and I could picture it so much in this bedroom just waking up I'd skipped I don't know how many alarms I wasn't going to my uni classes I felt so lost I was in this consistent cycle of binge eating and just feeling really unhappy like what is my place in the world I honestly just did not have a clue and it all starts just with a single choice like making a decision that you want to better yourself literally taking the smallest step in that direction and then it's like a ripple effect it's like a domino that just starts to fall and running for me has been one of those things like that's just been more than the actual run it's the like mental side all the obstacles that you go through when you are running like mentally like there's no way I'm going to talk to you and say that running it's not something that's easy it doesn't come easy to I don't think anyone but um being able to overcome and like push through those tough times like I know tomorrow is going to be bloody tough like the longest I've ran is 32 kilometers and Mason and I cramped so bad like at the end of that so there's that thought in my mind but I'm just reaffirming thoughts like my, I'm so capable my body's so strong I can overcome stuff like that also something a bit crazy someone called Nikki Jane has commented on my recent Instagram post which is really bizarre because my mum's first name was Nikki and her middle name was Jane also my middle name is Jane and I've never seen Nikki Jane on my Instagram before so that felt like a little just a little sign even if it's not and it is just someone who follows me that's called that I just think if you can take comfort in little things like that especially when you've lost someone in your life right so race pack came in this huge plastic bag I actually thought I was about to throw this away yesterday but then I think once you've completed the marathon or before you, you leave this somewhere with your stuff in so good job I didn't throw that away oh no I bought these actually so I brought four or five cysts gels with me the one the caffeine ones and then i bought some more just in case i've no idea what this brand is but it's got 40 grams of carbs per serving so i'm just going to sort this out later today this is my bib number 4701 i've not looked in here yet little frosting bag is this a napkin or is this a neckchief i can't quite work out what this is a bit of fabric in there uh, i think it's a neckchief armband and then some leaflets this is actually where we're starting tomorrow so at the the dome dome like this actual point so that's gonna feel really surreal actually it was really nice when we cycled past there yesterday and then i think that's it actually there's not too much in here bottle of water 
protein bar. So that is pretty much it. Okay, I thought we could do a quick Q&A between me and Mason because we've both been training for this marathon. We've done a lot of runs together and I feel like we've both had different experiences even though we've done, done a lot of the same runs together, haven't we actually? Yeah, um, yeah. But Mason's coming from a professional athlete background. You were a professional rugby player from 15 to oh, 15, 16. 24, 25 and super experience. That was your full-time career, wasn't it, in that mm. phase? When we first met actually, I remember you saying, oh my God, you're eating that much. And you were shredded lean as well. So I was like, back then I had a different mentality around food and nutrition. What have you found the most, the easiest thing during this marathon training? Eating. I found the Quality. eating the easiest part and most enjoyable, yeah. Eating a lot more calories in a calorie surplus most days. I found that quite easy. What have you found the hardest part? The hardest part is probably been, for me, balancing strength training as well as the marathon training because I don't want to you know, lose too much muscle mass, which you will most likely do if you're, if you're not, especially leading up to the marathon because I'm, mm. I'm sacrificing the weight sessions for the, the running session. So that's probably been the hardest. Like In the fact when your distance is coming yeah. up a lot. The time as well, so like got a balance of time now, but at the start it was like, okay, do I train twice today? Do I train tomorrow? If I train mm -hmm. legs tomorrow, then I need to train. Can't be able to do the pe the speed session tomorrow. And it's just like balancing that, but I found a good balance now. Mm, yeah, I agree. What have you got to be your hardest, yeah? My hardest has been trying to maintain work around the, so like what I didn't realise, you know when you fatigue after you've done a run, usually if you've done like a 10K, you're a bit tired or like you just think, gosh, I'll sleep well tonight. Mm. I feel like when you run over 20 20k it is just a different level of tired and fatigued mm. like no other as in i'll just sit on the sofa and feel like it's like an effort to just string up conversations which is something that i've never experienced before and it's weird because your brain's still there but you, you're just obviously like tired and depleted because mm. you've just ran for i don't know like over three hours which comes with it which i've definitely noticed my creativity for work has been yeah a challenge and a half i think you do adapt over time another thing when we first met i would nap a lot and you'd be yeah, like, why I are you about so this, much? Mm. And um, it was, that was like pre-season when we'd do training all day. So you'd come home, all you really do is sleep, eat, and then go to bed. Mm. Yeah, it was like, you were surprised how, how much I would sleep. Yeah, definitely. But sleep is like, yeah, the best thing for recovery. Mm. Managing that as well, there's obviously supplements you can take, and then right nutrition will help. If you're wanting to get better at running, what would be your two top tips? For that too. Top tips, I would if get a good... If they've not run. If they've not run. Over, they want to go from like 5k to 10k or something like that. If you want to go from 5k to 10k, I would start doing some zone two training runs. So like that's where you run. You're not running particularly fast. So your heart rate is, they say it's like 200 minus your age. Basically, so yeah, Google zone two and find out what your heart rate is. Mm. And then you're basically... If you've got a heart rate monitor, Apple Watch, oh, yeah, Apple Watch anything like that. Um, then you're running at that heart rate for like half an hour, 40 minutes. And when you're at zone two, you'll find yourself, you can run a lot longer than you would if you're trying to get a good time for 10K or 5K. Mm -hmm. So that's one tip. I'll do a lot more zone two running. And then the other tip would be run with a partner. So like some people prefer to run in headphones or on their own, but running with a partner is a lot more enjoyable. Running a group mm, or run club, yeah, that is a lot more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. What were your two tips? So my first one would be for me or what worked for me I didn't want to initially start running with someone because I don't know I had this funny thing in my head that I just like I, I wouldn't be able to run or I wouldn't be able to get mm -hmm. even past 1k when I really think back to when I first started so I actually found taking all the pressure off for your first few runs like just going out on your own and maintaining even if it's just a bit quicker than a walk just a jog for 20 minutes, something like that, or just mm. setting yourself a goal of three kilometers at a really nice pace. And that just builds a bit more confidence in yourself yeah, and can, like committing to it. That's actually what helped me because now I've only, as I've got more confident, I feel like I'm, I used to get worked up about running with people. Like that was actually one of my fears. I'd get more nervous about running with someone than I would running on my own, which is mm. a bit, I don't know if that's unusual, but you might be the same. So like set this. like a target of 1k. Yeah, just yeah. a small target and just like build it up each week, but commit to it. So make it something that you definitely can do. So start with 1K or 2K. Mm. Second tip would be to have a really nice outfit. That might sound a bit superficial, but I don't think it is. No, it because makes a It makes a difference. I put on a bit of makeup when I run and I just feel more put together and that correlates into my training 100%. Even if it's one outfit, just yeah. 
something that makes you feel nice and you feel confident in. We're just off camera talking about goals. That's one thing for this marathon. Definitely. That one of my most commonly asked questions I get on Instagram is like, how on earth do you have motivation? Mm. And motivation, when you have a clear performance goal, especially something that's actually challenging, because when you set yourself something that is a challenging goal, you don't want to cheat on yourself because mm. all I kept thinking was, it's only going to be me that's going to suffer <laughs> on the actual day. Like, I'm going to be the one that's struggling or the thought of not being able to complete something that I've set out and documented yeah. and created accountability just meant I would never skip on an actual run. When you do have a clear performance goal and you've got targets that you want to reach or like see improvement, mm. I just think that is, it gives you so much drive and also sharing what you're working on with like your partner or your friends and family. Like the more you talk about it, the more they kind of ask you. So you're just, you're not wanting to slip up and not be accountable. Mm. What about you? No, I'll, I'll add to that. It's, it's like when I you first started running you'd come in on, on a Saturday morning oh let's run 20k let's, or you'd invite me on the 20k but I'm like why would I want to run 20k mm. and then it was yeah seeing in, I was inspired by some friends we went running with and then seeing you enter the marathon I think you entered before me mm. and I was like well yeah we're going to Milan I want to come too and I entered as well and then since that it was an inspiration from you and from some friends that was like okay I, I need to set some goals to be able to run this marathon otherwise I'm not going to be able to. So mm. I started saying, okay, this week I'm going to run, I don't know, 50K during the week. Next week I'm going to increase that to 60K because there's a whole a lot of, you need to get a certain amount of volume in before you hit a marathon. So yeah, having a bigger goal and then mini goals underneath that mm. really, really helps. So we're just walking to this hotel, just as far as well. I'm just thinking, it's definitely a thing. I feel like as soon as I step foot on a plane and go to a different country, all the stresses leave my body. Like, I feel so relaxed. I've not opened my emails in about two days, I don't think. I think sometimes we can put so much pressure on ourselves to be like, on total four and that like, we're getting behind. But it's really only you against you, isn't it, at the end yeah. of the day? Like, sometimes you can think of these timelines that you've got to be always credit, working towards. Credit to ourselves. I think we've become better at managing stress. Yeah, definitely. And having any stress is a blessing in itself, really, anyway. And it's just pushing towards like a goal. In you. You learn English. It's just strolling a lot and I thought it was a statue, but it's an actual flamingo, like six of it. Some flamingos in the garden. Oh my god. So flamingos are a native bird in Puglia. I never knew they were actually Italian flamingos. We just arrived to the Portrait Hotel and they have a spa inside called Longevity Spa which is what we had a look at online and they had some availability today so we thought let's treat ourselves, let's have a spa day and well a spa a few hours. So we're going to have a massage each. I'm just going to ask like a light massage not like a sports like getting into my muscles kind of one because I don't really be sore from that. I'm just going to chill, they've got a pool here and literally in my element it is beautiful and it's quite quiet as well and it's like a dark aesthetic. I feel very calm, very zen, very, very zen. I brought a bikini, I feel like a slug, as in like I've eaten so many carbs today, not much protein, oh. <laughs> which I never thought I'd be complaining about, to be honest, but um, they also have a cryotherapy chamber, which I think is quite a good idea to try out today. So I'm just gonna put my bikini on. I'm absolutely loving Milan so far. It is absolutely beautiful. And it was even just nice walking around the streets and casually coming across a blooming flamingo, of all things. I can't actually believe that. Like, I thought my eyes were playing games with me. Um, and we also had a little bit of a walk. We've done about 3,700 steps. So we've got some movement in today. I don't know if I'm going to bother running today, like with that shakeout, but yesterday. This bamboo is just um, in the changing room, like a bamboo garden. It's giving very bougie. Oh, I'm fascinated. I just love checking out like all the change rooms and <laughs> all the accessories in places like this. Very cool. Oh my God. We've got the whole place to ourselves, like there is no one else here. So they've got a sauna, a steam room, the whole shebang. Oh my god, my excitement right now. That was way colder. <laughs> Like, incredible. I can't 
like it was about 50 minutes long and it was a full body massage. It's like a lavender oil that she's put on. Oh god, she got into just all my tight parts. I felt like I hadn't said like that anything was painful but she spent loads of time on my calf and oh that was just what I needed. I didn't think I realised how much I really needed just some TLC. Oh my lord, I feel like I'm floating. This bed is the comfiest thing as well. I think it's um, got like a heated mattress. It's really nice. I might just stay here. Maybe I'll forget doing the marathon tomorrow and just, I'll just be here. Grabbed a pizza. I think it's like a sourdough pizza. But... Just got back to the Airbnb, Mason's gone to the supermarket and I'm just prepping some dinner so I'm making some potatoes. The craziest thing just happened as we were on our way back walking to the apartment. So I went into this bakery, like Mason was obviously next to me, we would just cross the road and I was like, oh, where's he gone? Turned around and like walked out back out the bakery and he's talking to this lady that we met in a hotel like a year ago, this Italian lady, and I just can't get my head around how that's possible. And the funniest thing is I was like, how did you speak spot her? And Mason said, oh, she was like giving me like a screw face because Mason had a vest on and we were just walking down the street and she went like that. And that is exactly how we got talking to her the last time because she was sat on a table next to us at dinner like back in the summer in a northern part of Italy, Murano, where we went for my birthday. And she was sat on this table like two times, like two evenings in a row. And she was sat just like, like giving us these real strong, dirty looks. And I was just thinking maybe it's like a cultural thing. I couldn't quite work it out. And then it turns out the next day, Mason had gone to the sauna and this woman had said, by the way, I saw you dipping your bread into oil. Like those Italians, we don't dip bread in oil or something like this, really random. And then they got talking about politics and just had like a big conversation. And she was just quite significant on this holiday, to be honest. And you could take people like that the wrong way. But I always think it's rooted in, I just think, oh, something's happened in their life. Or like they're not unhappy and that's why they project, but they're not bad people, if that makes sense. But I love serendipity, serendipity, oh, I can't say it, serendipity, serendipities like that, because I just, yeah, isn't the world just really amazing and just crazy at the same time? Like, what on earth are the chances of that? I'm not having much luck with this Airbnb. It's absolutely gorgeous, but yesterday the hot water went off and now <laughs> you're off to the dungeon to reset the electric. I just had the hob. I think all I had was the hob and the oven on. Literally a dungeon. And all the wait, electric's gone. Wait, what's the video? Because she's pointing to me in this and then... I don't know. Hang on, let's just... This is what we need to go and reset. You gonna oh, do it or...? Yeah, I'll do it, but a bit long. Gosh, it's like two floors underground. All right, I've got everything out for tomorrow and we've got a few options because I can't decide whether to run in the Salomon running vest or this lighter weight belt. Mm, but I do feel like I've got quite a bit to carry so I don't think it's all gonna fit in there. Like, I'd, I wouldn't be able to bring a water if I took that. I'd just have to carry a water. I feel like for my first marathon, I'd feel more comfortable having options. I've got some medjool dates. So I'm not too sure if we've carved up enough, so here we are with, I think we've nearly done a whole pack of corn cake. We've got a banana. It's- I bet it's quite late. Oh my gosh, maybe it's 10 o'clock. It's half five. It's marathon day and it feels like it reminds me of Christmas morning. Mm. Mason's eyes aren't even open yet actually, I think. I don't think we had the best- well no, got some sleep. <laughs> Could have done with a bit more. my eyes. Eight hours, not even that. It was quite funny actually, like I think four hours into just being awake last night as in when we got into bed, I whispered, I was like, Mason, and you replied straight away. Mm. I was thinking it was just me who couldn't sleep, but oh god, I think I've done the marathon in my dreams about five times. Mm. God, I can feel adrenaline running through my head. Mm. Just a quick one, I'm opening my Flowness Club. Yes, Flowness, not fitness. I've listened to your struggles and looked back at my own personal journey and realized it wasn't just a fitness routine that helped me overcome my challenges. So I've created something that hasn't been done before. It's a new way of creating a lifestyle that fits with you to ensure you can be consistent with your training, eat the right things for you and manage your time doing it all. But instead of making a one size fits all PDF or a rigid app, I'm starting a club. There'll be private and group calls with myself and other coaches, events in the UK and all around the world. and 
content that won't be anywhere else. There will be a limited number of memberships, but there's a link in this video's description to get you a special early discounted price. So sign up now and secure your place. Thanks and back to the video. Oh my God, we've got here now, nice and early. This is the starting point. Wow. yesterday I need to give you a full debrief I need to tell you all about the marathon but yesterday was just an absolute crazy day just picked up a hire car and we're gonna drive to Lake Como we're just inspecting the car and we always take a video obviously beforehand to make sure there's no bumps so we've driven to Lake Como. We're not quite here yet, but we're going to the Mandarin Hotel for lunch. It's two o'clock and it actually only took us about an hour from Milan. The roads are a bit confusing though. We did take a few wrong turns, but we thought hiring a car just made a lot more sense because both our legs, they're just not functioning to the best of their abilities today. And I'm just more stiff than anything, like not necessarily pain, just I've never felt my legs like this ever before, probably because I've never ran a flipping marathon. Like I could not believe yesterday we'd done 50,000 steps and when we finished the marathon, there were no taxis running because all the roads were closed. So we had like a 30 minute walk, which was unintentional. Like the whole time we were trying to order a taxi on our phones, but it just wasn't happening. So we were like, we're just gonna have to walk back, which was just like a hobble. It's quite nice though, because we're in our medals and people like congratulations so I was quite enjoying that anyway but yeah it's been so nice and if we were back home I think today we'd have literally just sat on the sofa and ate all day but because we've not seen too much of Italy I feel like it's a good job we just got ourselves out I actually feel better for being out rather than sat in bed or on the sofa well you can see the snow on the mountains as well it's a really nice day as well, it's nice and sunny. It wasn't even forecast to be nice today. So that's lovely. Just actually thought to myself, last summer we actually went to Lake, oh. well we stopped off at Lake Garda and we were in, this is still Northern Italy actually, mm. Lake Coma, but we're further up north near the Dolomites and we were thinking that would be a potential wedding venue area, but we just didn't, I don't know, we didn't really go anywhere that we thought, oh yeah, we could get to see ourselves getting married here and it just didn't feel very warm if that makes sense so Milan feels a lot warmer and friendlier and maybe Lake Como could be the same vibe or maybe we'll see somewhere today who knows or maybe we won't I don't know but it just popped into my head so we're just hobbling down to this restaurant trying to walk normally I think we might have to get a buggy on the way back up here, to be honest, because it's a steep, steep incline. Okay. Say the word again. Buggy. 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 What was that other? It's similar. There's another similar word that I say quite differently to make sense. Bath. Oh, bath. 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 Doesn't sound natural bath. to me to say bath. I'm going to get in the bath. lost for words I have blooming completed the marathon I'm honestly so shocked I know that sounds really bad and I really do believe in visualization and the power of truly believing something but honestly I shocked myself running that marathon because I had that calf 
injury niggle and I was honestly sort of thinking to myself oh if the car flares up then I, I was just going to stop and like I'd kind of accepted that in one sense but I did do this exercise where I'd seen the finish line and I closed my eyes like when we got to the marathon when there were loads of people around and I just it was literally a split second but I just closed my eyes and like visualized myself running and finishing that's the main thing I did but I did have some form of doubt as in like I'd just come to acceptance I was like look if my calf flares up then I, I will just have to stop I don't want to tear my calf and then have to have like six months off running totally but at the same time I thought to myself your mind is so strong as in when you tell your body that it's got something to do oh, you'll, you'll be so surprised at what your body's capabilities are and like that's what I've really taken from this whole experience it's been two or three days uh Oh my gosh. I didn't want to film this the other day because I was so emotional and clearly still am, even though I've been like, I think I've been home two days and the marathon was like six days ago or something like that. That marathon was just so much more than just running for me. It was like proving to myself that, oh, Jesus, woman, to myself that I can do hard things and you can do hard things because if I can, then Jesus Christ, so can you. I really want to just start by saying that. Like, I've never considered myself a runner or super athletic. Like, it's not something that's come natural to me. It never really has, but it's been something that's totally changed my life. And I feel like running, as well as like weightlifting, as you guys already know, has totally transformed my life. I feel like I'm a different person from exercise. And that is the whole point of my platform to help you on that journey as well, because fitness and nutrition just translate into it just goes into the rest of your whole entire life and how you show up as a person it makes you be very disciplined positive and just teaches you so much okay marathon day came along woke up at half I think it was half five I honestly think I slept maybe two max three hours I felt wired like that night we went to bed uh, about 10 o'clock and I just felt like I was wired and I didn't even bother checking my phone to see the time because I just thought it's going to send me into like a panic thinking oh my god I'm going to run this marathon I'm like no sleep and I didn't bother looking at my whoop to see if like my recovery or if my sleep was really bad which I think is a really good thing to do got myself ready felt really good and I was just thinking oh my god like this run is actually here like 42 kilometers that is a blooming long way and my legs are going to carry me there today <laughs> so I feel like I had that realization and I actually wore the same outfit that I've done my training runs in mainly because my shorts that I wanted to wear didn't arrive but I kind of feel like that was a sign because the shorts that I was going to wear were slightly shorter so I was thinking if I'd have worn them anyway I'd have probably chafed and that's my first bit of advice like if you're going to run an, an event a race it's so tempting to get like a flashy new outfit which is great but I'd recommend doing some training runs in that beforehand because you don't want to go into a 42 kilometer like three four hour run in new clothes that are just going to rub and be really uncomfortable. I also ran in the same trainers that I've been running my training runs in. I did actually switch my trainer, I think it was like 10 days before the marathon and I feel like that played a part in getting injured because I haven't ran in that shoe in my whole training block and it was a carbon plated shoe which is a bit quicker and has you more on like your toes. So I was working like more of my calf and then that amongst with other things is how I kind of got the niggle. I'd ordered this running belt because I thought, oh, it'd be nice just to be free on this long run. And I did actually pack that. So that's what I was planning to run in on race day, but I couldn't comfortably fit all my gels in and I wanted to put some snacks in there. I've done all my training runs in a Salomon vest. So I just thought, you know what? Like, even if this vest slows me down, I don't really care because that's what I'm comfortable with. And I'm so grateful I did that because I could fit so much in and I could actually get it out. Whereas I honestly think if I'd have worn this tiny little belt that I tried to fit like my my phone and gels in and when you're a little bit fatigued it's just the last thing you want to do is be losing gels and just not being able to like run back for them Mason was like oh my god you look like a hiker because my salmon vest has got a pocket in the back but I was like do you know what I don't care everyone else was generally like around the marathon I feel like they were just either carrying like a water bottle but I needed, I needed somewhere to put my phone I want my arms to be free I don't know how to hold my phone and a bottle this is another tip take tissue with you to whatever race or marathon half marathon you're doing because there's no tissue in the toilets or the one that I went to and it was disgusting the toilet experience was absolutely gross I couldn't go to the toilet at this said portaloo and there was a big queue as well so I'd gone in the portaloo couldn't go and I thought I, I need to go to the toilet so I had to go and find a cafe close by I bought some like bananas and then went to a toilet there which I'd recommend doing if you can when we got to the race we were in good time so like I'd managed to go to the toilet but then didn't really have much time like I didn't do an extensive warm-up like I did a jog to and from the toilet and then before you knew it we were being herded like cows into all the groups so I'd put my like estimated time in I think I'd 
like four hours. Oh, I can't remember what I'd even filled in. I think it was four hours. Like for this marathon, I just wanted to get around the bloody thing because I've never run that distance. Like I wasn't super fussy on a time with my injury as well. Like I just thought I don't want to go and like put this pressure when I'm not even sure I'm going to make it round. My group was like second to the last. So I didn't know this at a marathon. You set off in obviously like groups. So it's like one to 11. I think I was in nine or 10 or supposed to be. So that was on my bib. So Mason, he was going for like a three, 325. So he did decided he wanted to run it as a race and I was like look you do you he wanted to go in like in a different group so he went in the second group so we left each other and then got like herded into different sections which was a bit stressful because I was just thinking there's so many people around and I don't even know if I'm in the right place so I actually ended up in like group seven or something I was in the wrong flipping herd of people and I hadn't properly like warmed up so I was literally like tucked in with people trying to do some warm-ups and not get squished in the meantime like I was doing some hip openers had to wait about 15 minutes like all tucked in I'd really recommend to keep moving like don't stand still I kept thinking oh my god everyone's like quite still at this point when just before you're gonna go and run I think you need to keep moving and like just doing some calf raises activating like little muscle then we got going I felt so hyped in the back of my mind I was just wondering how is this calf gonna play out here is it gonna agree with me today is it gonna hurt something that I still haven't got my head around that is just crazy to me is two days before when I did a shake out run so I did three kilometers just at a jog to kind of see how my body was feeling I felt so disheartened because my calf was in so much pain I could barely properly run without pain so it was a gamble on the day I was just wondering and whether it was going to be the exact same and I knew I wouldn't have been able to run if I was in that kind of pain on the day and waking up on that marathon day and not having like as much as a single niggle like absolutely nothing just fills me with just so much amazement and also just that I just feel like my mum was with me that day I just I can't get my head around that still how it was just absolutely fine I had calf sleeves on, which I think really helped. So I had some compression sleeves, which helped with blood flow. Started off and I was like, right, I'm going to keep my pace nice and steady. So I've got something in the tank for later on. Because I noticed on some of my training runs, like the 32K run, starting off really strong just meant I was struggling so much towards the end of the run. So I was like, maybe if I pace myself, get to halfway, then if I'm feeling good, I can pick up the pace then. Didn't quite go as planned as that, but I got to 10K and I was just more shocked. I was like, well, my leg hasn't even as much like made a single bit of pain. I got to half marathon, I was just thinking, oh my god like I can't believe I'm kind of here and because it was super sunny and like running direct sunlight I was just trying to keep in the shade as much as possible looked at my heart rate and it was flipping high like I think it was like 185 at this point and that was only kind of half marathon way in which was definitely I think due to the heat so after my half marathon that is when they had like these stations with sponges where you could just wet yourself so I, I had a water bottle and this sponge and I was just like throwing it all over myself I just think to myself oh my god I feel like I'm gonna make myself heavier because I was just drenched through but that definitely helped with cooling myself down I've seen some awful sights if I'm totally honest like some people off out on stretches and people injured which it's just not nice to see and can get in your head a bit like especially when I saw someone like holding their calf I was just like don't think about it don't think about it a few things that really helped me just to keep going as well because after the half marathon after 30k is when it really kind of just got hard and I was feeling hot and tired up until that point my strategy was every five kilometer drink an isotonic drink that they give out at every five kilometer station like throwing it at my face because they're quite hard to drink I quite liked the isotonic drink because it wasn't totally like full because I was worried thinking when am I going to be able to go to the toilet and there were no toilets in sight so I didn't to drink too much so I had a bit of the ice tonic every 5k a splash of water but not too much because I sometimes find if I drink too much I end up getting a stitch and then at every 5k as well I had a full gel I think I had six or seven gels with me about five of them were caffeine ones which seem to make the most difference when you are running that distance but it is a hell of a lot of caffeine that's it's like equivalent to four or five coffees in caffeine 20 kilometers actually was struggle city I think mixed with the heat because I feel like I've been used to the heat like running in the heat here that's something I really underestimated I did a wild wee as well at one point because there were no toilets or I passed one toilet the whole way around and I didn't need it at that point so I just saw a bush and went for it I didn't want to stop as well for long because I noticed like at that point my legs were flipping oh they were like I can't even explain like I just thought if I stop now like they're not going to continue going and then the first time I stopped was at I think 31 kilometers a few things that I said like words of affirmation that I feel like helped the most this is what I kept saying in my head I was like cruising cruising because something about me like on these long runs like past 
25, 30K, I sometimes get these moments of like, I don't know if it's panic or just like, I start, I notice my breathing goes a bit out of whack. It's quite hard to explain because I've never experienced it in any other aspect of my life, but it's almost a bit like hyperventilating, like probably panicking, thinking, oh my God, like I'm really far. I'm running really far and I'm still here, which is kind of funny to think about, but in those moments, I just speak to myself in my head, like say, you are so strong, you are so capable. It honestly gives you goosebumps. Like words of affirmation are so powerful, especially in moments like that when you are struggling. I also wrote on my hand, keep going, rather than letting those creeping thoughts that are telling you to stop, because that does happen. The amount of moments where I was just thinking, oh, I'm gonna have to stop now, like I can't go on anymore, or just every time, I think when it got to like 37 kilometers, I was just thinking, oh my God, it's still so far to go. And I think when you haven't actually covered a distance before, you are always wondering like is my body gonna let me take me there the legs start to feel so heavy and quite lead like like you're just everything just feels heavy and quite shocked that I didn't need to go to the toilet toilet because sometimes on these longer runs like my stomach can go a bit off but that's why I think keeping things like your gels the exact same as what you've been doing in your training makes all the difference um, and just keeping things as similar as possible so that you're not shocking your body with anything new I do think you see some like real sights that I hadn't really heard talked about something I did notice was I had absolutely no appetite like I brought four or five days dates with me and usually I always have that on a longer run. This time around I felt so sick as in whilst I was running like someone had a sign that said think of the pizza later and there was another one like think of the beer later and honestly when I, I like when I saw these signs I almost gagged that is how much like I just had no appetite. Like, the drinks were fine and then I had oranges at the like every 5k like just like an orange squeeze. There was also some random signs like some guys were like in the middle of where we were all running just like in the middle of the road handing out sausages. I don't think I saw one person grab a sausage but I just couldn't think of can you imagine eating a sausage whilst you're running and then when my mouth was like the driest thing drier than the Sahara desert there were crackers at, at each station and again like I would have just turned into I think dust if I'd have gone for the crackers so the ice tonic drink was great gels were great couldn't seem to stomach anything which again like just quite surprising so the crowds were like quite big in Milan but they were very quiet like the amount of times I was thinking oh come on guys I could do with a bit of motivation like I really felt that my dad called me as well at one point which was really nice so I kind of spoke to him as I was running and then when I finished I was like thinking Mason had like he was obviously going for a much quicker time I finished in three hours 54 minutes so I thought he'd have like been waiting at the finish line so I got there and couldn't see him and then he'd called me at 30 kilometers so like long story short he had to stop and he had basically collapsed at 30 kilometers which is so scary he's absolutely fine now but he'd gone full pelt as in like he was running a crazy pace and and I think with the heat combined, like it's just so much on your body. And he's 91 kg, like he's a big human. And the guys he was like running next to were obviously like half the size of him. Like it's just mad. Like he really had sent it, full, fully sent it. And he was on, on track up until like 31 kilometers when that happened. And I think that was from like dehydration, and obviously heat stroke from being in the sun. I'd got to the finish line, was like looking for him, couldn't find him. And then I went on fire my iPhone because I didn't want to call him at this point and like disturb him if he just got going again. Like I thought, oh, maybe he's stopped at 30K and then like carried on. So I went on fire my iPhone, could see he was moving. So I was like, God, he's moving quick now. 10 minutes had gone by and then I'd text him and he had replied saying, I'm in the medical tent. So that was blowing the most confusing thing and stressful. So ran to the medical tent and he is on a drip. He'd been, he'd had like six or seven IV drips. And he'd, the time that I'd seen him on Farm iPhone was when he's in the ambulance, which is just wild. And a really nice Italian couple had stopped to help him, thank God. And he, yeah, he's absolutely fine, but just, God, absolutely wild and unexpected. So yeah, that is pretty much all the marathon stuff. We've both come away with so many lessons and I'm really happy with like how my training block went. I wish I didn't have like that niggle and I would love to do another marathon at some point. Recovery has been something all right. Like I feel like two days afterwards, I couldn't really walk to be honest. It was a real hobble. I found the more I was sitting around as well, like that made me stiffer. So I noticed if I kept moving, like it definitely helped a lot, but I've never felt fatigued like that. Like my whoop was on 1% recovery, which I've never seen it on. And all my metrics, so like my heart, uh, resting heart rate was super elevated. Everything was just out of whack. And I felt in my body like, Jesus, I need to eat some nutritious food, get nutrients back in me. And I'd say now it'll be a week on Sunday. It's Friday when I'm filming this. Is when I'm just about feeling a bit more normal. I'm grateful for this whole experience and for Mason. 
just the whole thing, to be honest. It's been really emotional and I really felt like my mum was with me, like I say, that day. The thought of her as well, like that really kept me going. So yeah, I definitely do one again, I think. I don't know when. I feel a little bit like, right, now I need to set another goal with my training because that's 10 weeks of marathon training done and finished and Mason definitely wants to do another marathon. I'd really recommend Milan as well. That was absolutely an amazing experience and it's nice to do a European one to get a bit of sun and also see somewhere new. I would love to do a Q&A as well. I might do that in a separate video just so that this one's not the longest video in existence. So let me know if you would like some marathon and running in general Q&A kind of questions that I can help you with. Also, if you've got any current fitness and nutrition struggles, I've created a form in the description box down below. Basically, if you could fill that out so I can help you in the best way possible, it would be so appreciated. Thank you so much for watching this video. I can't wait to see you in the next one. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your day.